Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, I call the regular city planning commission meeting to order. It is Monday, April 3rd at 6 o'clock. Do roll call. John? Here. Okay. Here. Dave? Here. Josh? Here. Steve? Here. And Rick is excused. Uh, so I look for a motion to approve the planning commission minutes from March 3rd. Motion to approve planning commission minutes of March 3rd, 2023. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there <coughs> any discussion on the motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next item on the agenda is concept plan review for proposed mixed use development on plots 11, 12, and 13 downtown waterfront assessors plan. Take it away, sir. Good evening, everybody. So just some background. Uh, city staff met with Greg John and Larry Johnson, Mary Johnson as well. Uh, they own the 214, uh, Greg John owns the 214 Front Street, uh, and the Johnsons own the vacant lot and 20 Orange Street. And the property owners together are proposing a redevelopment of those three lots. Um, the three lots together are 0.33 acres uh, in size that are in the C1 Central Commercial Zone. And right now it's proposed to demo uh, the current standing buildings for the construction of a mixed-use building with retail and condominium style residential. So right now the current zoning standards wouldn't allow de development to the proposed magnitude so a PUD would be necessary there. Uh, and the zoning requirements for the C1 district here and these are possible PUD requirements that uh, can be adjusted, modified, but these would be the ones that would fit what the proposal um, was given. So they're, they're proposing uh, 45 feet uh, height uh, in, in comparison to the 35 foot uh, requirement in the C1 zone and zero feet for minimum yards um, as well as one and a half spaces per unit that staff set based on uh, the other PUD that occurred in the C1 district um, which was the Eagles Point condo which had 1.65 spaces per unit um, and that building was allowed to go 55 feet in height rather than 45. Um, some concerns with the proposal that staff had is that we currently do not have fire equipment for structures greater than 35 feet in height, really, so we'd have to rely on Cottage Grove, Hastings, or River Falls to lend us their ladder trucks or equipment, um, and that's the case for the Eagles Point condominium as well. Uh, the other concern is the lack of parking in just the downtown in general. Uh, we're also concerned about the automated parking system that was proposed uh, as it could be kind of an encumbrance to people to park down there and load their cars so they <coughs> might take the quicker option which would be parking along the street. Uh, there are some benefits as well though. It would uh, have an improved appearance to the downtown uh, as seen from the river and, and the bridge. Uh, the Planning Commission can always request a specific exterior uh, such as the brick facade with an example to the right. Um, tourism as well, the retail storefronts that would be provided um, and the boardwalk on the first floor would drive tourism kind of down towards the river uh, with the riverfront and utilize the recently developed amenities that we put at the riverfront there. And also the tax base, uh, the condominium development could increase the tax base for the city. So some options moving forward with the proposal, um, you could approve as is, approve with different conditions, uh, offer some feedback uh, and, and some questions for a future meeting or denial of the proposal. Currently, Larry Johnson and Mary Johnson are here. Greg John might be on his way, but I'll invite them up now to kind of talk over their proposal here. So, let's get one up. Okay, there's my your mother. All right, I'm Larry Johnson, owner of uh, St. Croix Liquors, 20 Orange Street. Um, I also, we own Papa Tronio's in town also with uh, my two sisters. Uh, we just purchased that at the end of 2022. And so I had thought about moving that down to the riverfront. Um, and that we're thinking would be included in this new building on the retail level, as well as the liquor store. Um, 
As Carter stated, Greg John is supposed to be on his way. He had a meeting, a business meeting. He was running late, so he might walk in at any time, but we will proceed until then. Um, you can see on the, on the left corner of the, the north side of uh, Greg John's structure there that shows the elevation of 690, and that's kind of where our base level is um, for the we go, I think, two feet under that for the parking structure. We'll get into that on the next slide. But you can see up in the right-hand corner the existing uh, picture of what's what's currently there. Uh, pole, pole barn-like structure on the north side with a flat flat roof structure to the south there. Um, it encompasses about 14,000 square feet, 0.33 acres. Um, so how we got into Greg, Greg John, this is Greg here actually, so do you want to come on up, Greg? I will. <coughs> Greg, had, uh, what, what kind of started the ball rolling is he came to me and wanted to maybe put a new roof on the structure, and, and I said, all right, let's get some quotes, and so we did. He got somebody to come in, and one of the, one of the construction companies that came in said, you know, maybe you want to look at tearing it down. We could uh, give you put a new two-story up, pretty reasonable. And Greg came over and was pretty excited about that. And I said, yeah, that, you know, that's a viable option, but maybe we want to look at going a little higher too. And so that's that got the ball rolling for us to look at these projects. And so with that, uh, we hired an architect, and we've got two options right now: option A and A.1. And they're they're not final by any means. There's there's going to be some changes certainly, and as we discuss with you guys, of course. Um, so yeah, I think we can go ahead and go on to, to down arrow. Oh. Down arrow. There we go. All right. So on option A, this is a uh, <coughs> four levels above grade and two parking levels below grade. Um, Grade is Broad Street. So Broad Street is 700... 707, 708. 708, right at the corner. And then it's down to 690 when you get down by the back of uh, Muddy Waters. So it drops a good 18 feet from Broad Street down. But you can see that the lower level is at 690, which is what the current north end of the property level is at right now and then there'd be a second level of parking. Um, and that second level on this plan, you enter it from Orange Street. The lower level you would enter from Front Street, sure. the north side of Front Street. Yeah, that'd be helpful. This is Muddy Waters over here. So you'd come, you'd come down. So entering here would be on the north face of the building. And then Broad Street is here. Scabs. There's another entrance so, to the upper level. The upper. You should really be talking more because he should point so they can hear it on TV. Just FYI. Okay. I hate to do that to you. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So then if you. That's a dumb. No, it's fine. If you look at the cross section there on the bottom left, you can see the three levels of housing on top of one level of retail. Um, and then on the bottom right there, it shows the the retail level, a top view of the retail level, uh, with a boardwalk around the perimeter, the be the south and uh, west perimeter of the structure. And on this particular plan, there's a elevator shaft on the north corner there, um, which would be uh, the north side of Greg John's property currently, and about 7,000 square feet of retail space. Um, all right, we'll go on to the next plan. Any questions on that at Who all? Who owns that land just to the north where you say you're coming off of uh, Front Street? Who owns that just to the north of you? On Front Street, that is uh, actually the city owns that portion right there. I'm just wondering. So you're so talking yeah. from the. For your parking entrance. At the building. Your, park, your parking entrance. Yep. On that Cur then. Currently, there's a. So on the drawing, we own on the drawing, but where there's the city. But, but you're going across something, and it isn't it's city, city street necessarily. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. But it is not but someone else's property. It's it's the entrance to get to the backside of Schuler Chiropractor and no, tax two structures. Yeah. Who owns it is my question. Yeah, yeah. city. It's, it's city owned. Yep. So it's not a 
city street necessarily though, neither. Right. Okay. Street. Correct. That's fine. That's yep. all I ask. City owned property. Just yep. so everyone understands that yep. you know, they're going across somebody's property. In this case it's city, it's not necessarily city street at this point. Right. That's right. all I yep. just so everyone understands. So yeah, we'd be accessing the same way the, the other yep. property owners yep. up above are accessing right off of the yeah, it'd be yeah. All right. So this is this is the uh, plan view of the condo units themselves. Um, four two-bedroom units and four one-bedroom units for, a, for three levels, so a total of uh, 24 units in all. And at 24 units, we're required to have one and a half parking stalls, which would be 36 parking stalls. And on our plan, we've got 38 provided on this on this mm -hmm. option, option A. Um, so yeah, you can see they're all 10 foot high elevation. And any questions regarding those at all? That's 38 underground. Correct, yeah. 38 start parking yeah. cells on the ground. Yeah. Right. Two, two levels. Mm -hmm. yeah. And those would be just for the tenants? Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. And they will be for sale. <laughs> the units. Yes. You're supposed to say sold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As of now, I don't need one. <laughs> All right, we'll go on to the next one here. So this is, so that was that was option A. This is going to be option A one now. So uh, this is just the same as our first sheet on the first option. So we'll go on to the next one. All right. So option A one is uh, a retail level with two levels of condos above it. So the elevation to the top of the building obviously is not nearly as high as option A. And so we're only got uh, two levels of condos so we don't require as many parking stalls. So we've got one level of parking and there's a parking lift on this, on this option also. And we'll take a look at that in some of, some of the next slides here. Well, I guess you can see on, on the one up to the left. The lower left. The lower left, so those would be parking lifts right there, and there's a there's a picture of what the lift looks like, also in one of the following slides. Mm -hmm. But uh, Greg and myself and Mary went and viewed one in in Hudson on a similar project to this on the riverfront, the old uh, Dibbles building, mm -hmm. and they've got uh, a lift, a three-story lift in there, car lift, which it, it operates quite well. I mean, it's a pretty slick setup. You push a button as to what vehicle you want down, what, what location it's in, and it just moves the vehicles around and lowers yours to the ground within, what, two minutes maximum time, I think they said? Yeah, that one so, was three, three levels. Right, and this, these are only two levels, the ones we're looking at here. So, um, so they, couldn't, they couldn't fit enough cars in that area, so they went with the three-level lift. And they were able to, to get 20 cars for the 12 units. Mm -hmm. So this upper left shows that where the cars are is just digging a pit. So you're not doing the whole, you're not excavating the whole second level of parking right. there. Mm -hmm. And then it shows the, so yeah, you've got, uh, so upper left is really the pits for the mm -hmm. parking lift structures. And the right would be the parking level. Uh, currently it's showing you're entering from Front Street in the middle of the structure there, but we're really going to want to enter from the, the north side, at least move it yeah. to the north more, so. Um, just a third option that we could do. Right. So this, this lift system, that just makes it so that you guys don't have to... So in order, in order for you to get as many cars in, in as possible, sometimes in other places they have to use a lift because they only have so much room. Mm -hmm. So if you only have so much room, you can get the cars in that you need by putting in this lift. The next slide, I think you can show right. them what You'll it looks see, like. yeah. It basically doubles our capacity for parking because we've got, it's an underground parking beneath the main level of parking. It's a pit that it lowers the vehicles into. You don't have to do a ramp to go to the next level. Right, right, and there's no oh, ramp. Right, okay, so it's, so you, yeah, you drive your vehicle on, get out, come over, push a button, and it lowers it into its location. So I, I see a retail space is split here compared to option one. That's just, 
an option. It's another option. Right. For just retail, that's none of, that's none of those yep. ideas. Right? Exactly. So, I know it's that. Yeah. Carbon yeah. stone. Yep. Right, right. I don't understand. Just so, want to point yeah. that out to the first so, change Right. All right. So here Let's we've go got left. a picture of the lift, the parking lift right there on the lower right. And in this option, it would this this option has 14 14 total units um, on the in the two levels, so seven units on each level, three one bedroom, four two bedroom, and so at one and a half stalls per unit, we would be required to have 21 stalls, and we currently have it designed for 23 stalls. So. In this option also, you can see the elevator shaft is located in the corner, basically, on the inside corner, versus on the north side like it was on option A. Um, let's see. Yeah, and it, like I say, it's only two levels of condos versus having a third so the level. the left has one open, one open <coughs> space so that you can raise and go left and right. So there's always one open space on the right. Left. I think that's okay. So yeah, looking at the, a front shot here of what the structure could look like uh, with that garage entrance moved more to the north there, to the left. And on the lower right there, you'll see a staircase. We'd have to, we'd have that boardwalk like it is somewhat there on the lower right. And we'd have to have a small staircase coming down <laughs> for crossing Orange Street and Front Street to the riverside. And certainly have some, uh, some viewing decks from the condo units, as you see on the left there. Um, and it, oh, go ahead. I think the main thing, the main thing for us is that uh, we, we think we can improve the riverfront. I think we can make it better. We think we can fit in some good retail parking for the residents, but the, the main thing for us is to move forward with some type of approval, because we don't want to spend a bunch of money and say, no, we're not going to do it. So, so that's basically what we're trying to do today is uh, move the ball forward so that we can continue talking to architects and different designs and different ideas. And if you have any ideas, of course, we would listen. <clears throat> I've got a question. Yes. In the illustrations, uh, it mentions the height of the uh, uh, commercial space as nine feet. Is that finished feet? It's quite low. Um, well, this, this is eight feet right here. So it'd be a foot taller than this for the right. finish. But just picture like I, I understand now that you guys have some ideas of what you want to put in there, sounds like, which is great. Um, you know, but then down the road, fifty years, whatever, you know, it's uh, you go into certain places and really tall ceilings are sometimes necessary, you know, or whatnot, depending on what you have in there. It sounds like from what you want to put in there it would work great, you know, but nine feet seems kinda on the shallow side for some commercial applications, I would speculate, but I'm no professional. I was just curious, is that the plan, though? Because then you've we got don't, We don't have a plan set in stone, so sure. we can right. uh, take a lot of it's going to depend on what you tell us. If you tell us you can put in a, a seven-story building, we could put in a taller ceiling. Right. At, at four stories, we're <clears throat> approaching that 45-foot mark. But with the three stories, with the two condo and one retail, I mean, we would have space certainly to increase that retail like side. Like a picture, of for example, that's got to be on the bottom right. It's got to be a 14 foot, 16 foot ceiling. You know, that, that would be you know a grocery, whatever is on there. Yeah, these are projects the architect has worked on right. in the past, and sure. I asked him for, I asked him for pictures to kind of give people an idea of what we can do. Mm -hmm. It's not. But that's not like what the plan is right now. Yeah. It's an option. Mm -hmm. All right. So these be luxury condos, is what we're thinking? It could be whatever you want, but obviously the price is going to depend on, you know, how much do we pay. It's going to be $175 a square foot for parking, 230 to 250 per square foot for retail and for, uh, for condos.
condos or apartments or whatever. How big are the units? Uh, the kind of plan to be based on the rough drawings. I'm going to go back to the one. So here we've got. Uh, Is it a thousand yeah. feet for well, the, the two one bedroom? bedroom? Yeah, for the one bedroom around a thousand, eight hundred to a thousand square feet for one bedroom, and somewhere around. Uh, twelve to fifteen, I think. Yeah, probably twelve to thirteen for the two bedroom. Those are pretty big. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the first contractor we spoke with said that they cur they currently are doing a thousand almost maximum. He said for for two bedroom, and in comparison to Eagle Point, we thought that's pretty small. So yeah, that's that's kind of where we're at. So yeah, I like to see them. And that. and right now, actually, in looking at this option, option A one, we're thinking there is a possibility we could squeeze another one bedroom in there. You can see. Um, kind of in the center area, it wouldn't have a view, so it would be, yeah, it wouldn't have a view, it would just be off of the elevator there to the top left. So that's a po another possibility. Get. The uh, roof illustration in the top left there, yep. is that, would that be a space for the occupants to to be out on, or is that the thought there? Yeah, there's uh, the place we went to in Hudson has a rooftop also. Right. The old Dibbles building. Kind of a, people can use it. Yep. Yeah. But in this in this uh, setup, pretty much everybody's got a view of the river here. Um, along along Front Street, obviously they'll be able to look up and down river. And along Orange Street, they should have a view down river certainly. So. And, and like Greg alluded to, I mean, if, if you saw the picture that he brought in to show Carter and Matt in our first meeting and said, what do you like better? What's existing there? A uh, picture of our existing building versus versus the newer structure. I mean, with the riverfront improvement, it would uh, it would do wonders for that for that area, we believe. So. Yeah, I, my two cents, I know I, I think of the fire department right away, which I know normally, sometimes we do. I did get a hold of the chief today asking him what he thought. Yeah. But I like the fire department's thought, but the thing is nowadays you're not building a building without sprinklers. So I know the old 35-foot rule, that's probably what the, old, the new condo's down there, which some people say blocks the view, which it does. But it's, it's, you need that ladder truck when you got sprinklers. It's probably not as important. And we do have mutual aid, which allows us to use them ladder trucks. So is it is that big a deal? I'd like to know what the vision would be if you put 45 from downtown what does that look like from like main street just my curiosity right if you could do sure. something like that it'd be interesting to know what it looks like um other than that the four stories i'm like yeah downtown the only biggest thing i said again is that is the parking issue we know that right as i'm sitting there listening to you guys talk i think you got a boardwalk could, could we have parallel parking and still have somewhat of a sidewalk in front of the building so you can get at least five retail spaces better than nothing down in front that's just my thought i'm just throwing it out there right now i, I it, agree that I'm, I'm thinking no boardwalk, and we step the retail on Orange Street, right? So you don't you don't need a boardwalk going up 10 feet. You can just have the have the sidewalk. And, and as well as part of stairs, you accessibility, yeah. you got to kind of watch that. It's your boardwalk. Right. But you're right. If you got a ramp and then ramp you have that level spot right. for your space, right? I agree. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the boardwalk, I'm just trying to think. Maintain as much parking as we can down there, and even if it's on your property a little bit, where okay, instead of a boardwalk on the front street, can we have parallel parking mm -hmm. for the retail? And mm -hmm. then your parking's under, underneath. I like, you right. know, if you're going to do it, of course, I'd like the brick on the river side, and you know, maybe even on orange, maybe not. That's just my thought, I'm throwing it out there. Mm -hmm. But I don't mind the, the four stories, it's that view thing I worry about how much view are we blocking because you know, everybody can go down. I know I have one, one resident say, well. So not a good view. Go over to Minnesota and across the river, and you get a good view of the river there. But mm -hmm. you know, I still, it's nice to be able to not all of a sudden put a wall up and see the river unless you're living on it. Right. So that's my thought. But for the, the, the 45 feet, I don't know if I have a, a problem with that. I, the, the, we know we need housing, and I guarantee you, people buy these, live in them, and then they're going to Florida in the winter time, and they might sit all winter. That's probably mm -hmm. what these will be. They won't really be someone's house necessarily, unless Kate buys one because she wants it. Do you guys intend to have these for rent or are they all this. privately owned? I, I am not sure how it's going to work yet, so we're getting numbers, we're getting 
budgets and prices and mm -hmm. I know this is not the meeting to talk about uh, TIF money and other things so I'm not going to bring it up <laughs> but uh, yeah the more affordable we can make it the better for, mm -hmm. for us and yep. for whoever yeah I, I agree with Dave that my biggest concern would be parking mm -hmm. that's um, mine as well you know one and a half parking spots per unit most people these days have each have their own car. How much those residents will, will be parking on the street? And the one retail. And the one and a half. Plus the retail, yeah. The one and a half is not our yeah. code, it's your code. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, aware of that. So. I, I guess that's just, I'm just saying, not my concern with your project, just my right. concern overall right. downtown. But, that's that's absolutely. Absolutely. Too. but the one thing is we do have no parking overnight downtown, so they're gonna have to figure that out themselves pretty quick. During the day, they might take up spots, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where you don't have to use TIF money to try to provide more parking just for the downtown anyway. I was talking about before. Behind uh, uh, Holiday? No, I was just saying uh, behind uh, No Name, buy all those buildings up there in the alley and tear them down and put a big parking lot up there. <laughs> well, they're, they're buildings. Yes, Matt. You, you, you I, I just wanted to point out, too, uh, this is a PUD, so right. this is the ultimate kind of flexibility in terms of what What we want as well as what, what they want. can get. So, if, for instance, uh, Commissioner Peterson was saying, I'm concerned with 1.5. So if the commission says, well, we want two, that's ultimately up to them then to figure that out. I'm not saying they would appreciate that because that's going to drive I'm not cost. necessarily saying that. I'm saying, was there any, what other ideas are there that we can possibly potentially increase parking down there right. with this project? I think mm -hmm. the, the follow up to the, the thing that we're concerned with, the first concept plan also, because it has an entrance off Orange Street, it does result in at least three parking spots. Yeah, that that would be your I just wonder how close is it going to be to the Bill Moles Pharmacy Building? Yeah. Right to the lot line. Yeah. Oh, well, so yeah. If you go back. <laughs> See the lot line dash Five. dash dash? That's pretty much. Does Moles Pharmacy, is that building like five feet more. behind their building, or is that building at the property line? Is that the property line? I think it's, it's the property, property, line. property line, but you'd have to have it's some kind of an easement there. They probably have some easement because they, go, they got a door out the back anyway? Yep. Well, no, that door is, is in, on their property line, so... They don't have any door going out the back of their building. Yeah, it's they do. It's not on their property. Yeah, it is. It is, yes. Okay. Yep. I think it faces south, though. If you go back There's, from where that park yeah, is, coming off Orange Street. So, that one? Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like there's two stalls plus the stairway. So you're looking at... <coughs> right, but 30, the structure's going to be right up on the property line or well, right... So that would be my one question on the Rob brought up. Does the, I know that's a, the, the boutique hotel. Now, is there any windows out that back? Of that, of that building? I'm looking at it right now. Of, of which structure? Yes, there is. Oh, the port? Or? Yeah. yeah, the port. Right, but they knew when they put those in. In fact, Megan came down and talked to me about that, and she knew that, uh, you know, that that's a possibility. This is, uh, yeah, you can build right to the lot line. So. I'm trying to remember if they need light and ventilation for a hotel room. I can't remember what the They've got says. windows on the Orange Street side on that unit. But you're not at, well, yeah, the building does go there. You don't yeah. have that. I thought your stairs are over there. That's on one concept. One, right. One the building will there. still go up to the condo levels right there. So there'll be, there'll be a so wall. So there's a door on that, that door reverse has river a, side of that hotel, but it's actually it's a notch out, and it's actually facing Orange Street. Correct. So they can't get out of their building. That's all I, that's yep. all I care about. Yes, really. yes. Yeah. No one says that. Maybe they don't have to have a window in that hotel room, and then they, they're egress. they got one door, and that's all they need because it's a small right. enough space, I think. All right. Um, yeah, I, I like the concept. Uh, maybe the parking. Yeah, that's our biggest concern. And, again, as much as you guys don't want to hear it, maybe it's two per unit. You'd say, of course, one bedroom's one, two bedrooms are two, but in reality, two people can sleep in one bedroom. <laughs> if you have a visitor, then you have one more car. Or you could have or a married one. couple who both have a car. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's just it. There's that. So that's why I say this is our option. They get some leeway in asking for their development, but we, we also can say, well, if you want PUD, we want if you want parking spots, which... I, I agree. Parking. I guess I'm more just concerned about losing losing right. street parking well, to this. And your customers are going to want more parking well, right, than us. Right. I got so two there cars. Would, there would be no loss of parking if we enter down right. by right. 
down by uh, Muddy Waters. So all <clears> those <throat> parking spots on Orange Street would still be there? It'd all be there. Even, with the, even if you put a boardwalk or something, correct? Every, nope. Everything would still be there. Yeah, we won't let them go onto the city street, yeah. so that's... So, I, but I still see John, but what he's still saying is, is if you don't provide enough off street for coming off of Front Street, however you look at it. Yeah, nothing would change. Um, you're still going to, we have the potential of having some of them parking down there, figure out how to juggle their car later, but during the day, all day long, they park there because they only got one spot. And then at the end of the night, they go up, okay, we'll go up the parking, pull the parking lot on Orange Street and walk down later. And I guess you guys have an interest in maximizing parking as well because it would be your retail there that would right. Right. want the parking right. for. So that's what I say. So, mm -hmm. you know. So, did like, and I'm just asking, does Megan's, the hotel's patrons, do they park, they have to find their own? They probably go up on Orange Street Park, because they cannot park on Main right. Street or Orange Street overnight. Okay. So they have to go up that Orange Street parking lot, this municipal lot. Right. And, and, so and not that there's couldn't, but there again, the bad yeah. thing about saying, well, they could do that too. bad thing is if they're permanent residents, they'd fill up half that lot and only lose one parking for downtown. So that's John's concern again. Um, yours as well as ours. So, you know, do you say two per spot, and really they could need three. You know, it could be a husband, wife, and a kid, and they got three cars. You know how it is, but you, or, can't, you can't do every, every one of them. Or it could just be one. Mm -hmm. It's a one-bedroom unit. Right. There could just right. be a single guy, yeah, single girl there. And for one and a half. No, well, but they're in a PUD, so we can require whatever we want. Well, I, think <laughs> so. I feel like this group, too, has to then help the city, because this isn't our job, to come up with more parking and, like, not just for Greg John, but in general. Well, we've got to provide more parking for downtown. So, yeah. you know, the retail, because, you know, I, we try to fight that, get money from downtown businesses when they expand like this to say, um, you're going to pay for every parking stall you can't provide because now you're increasing your retail space. Uh, it was going to be 2,000 a spot or 1,000. And all be, oh, no, no, we don't want that all, well, but yet they want parking. You know, so I think the business should step up to the plate too a little bit, would be my opinion, and say, if you want more parking, maybe you, maybe you only give us a 1,000 bucks here. I'm just, that's a side. But um, I, I kind of have to agree with I kind of have to agree with John though. Maybe it's two per per unit. And I know you guys want to hear that, but that well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't specifically say that. Thanks, John. <laughs> I didn't specifically no, say that. No, but you know what? I, I, you know, I, and they, they got to know what we're trying to protect the city's interest. And, well, and their interest. And, and, and I would say a business owner that doesn't try to do as minimal as possible and make better profits are a bad business person. That doesn't mean you go along with what they say all the time. Yeah, but if they, if they put in more parking, they're going to sell more parking. The what? They'll sell more parking then. So, you think you can just get a spot when you buy a condo? That, well, that would be part of it. That's what I'm saying. They're going to sell, well, these, no, they, sell these lots. We would say they have to provide parking for that unless the person doesn't want it. I don't know how you'd sell it to them. That but someone always wants to the condo. Yeah, I think that's right. You usually pay for your yeah, spot. Yeah, pay for your spot. Know, so, most so condos have just, like outside parking that you can park for free, mm -hmm. but most people want to spend the extra bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that. In that scenario, that wouldn't work for this. Obviously, if somebody bought a condo and they didn't buy a parking spot, then they'd be parking on our street, which goes against the whole point of requirement. But that would be part of the uh, approval process is that the parking spot would have to come along with the condo. Mm -hmm. So you that would that be built into the sale. Extras, yeah. The concept you like. Uh, I, I don't mind the three store or the three level of residential. I don't. The uh, requirement. I think it's a good idea. We've talked about requirements for parking for businesses when we talked about all the last businesses, and it was a it was a number of uh, spots per uh, square foot. Does that apply to these no. retail spaces? Not residential. Retail, yes. yes. The retail but it's spaces. downtown. But it's downtown. We've never enforced it downtown, which I've never agreed, but that's the policy we've had forever. So, so it does apply to it, though, but just whether or not we enforce it? Is that what I'm hearing? Well, they're going to be capricious, is what I tell you. Well, so there is. Trailer, uh, you're going to get a, a food truck on there with a parking lot. Go ahead, Vance. So for the Z1 uh, district, there is no requirement for parking for any square footage requirement. So basically, you can make a. If you had 10,000 square foot building, you'd have zero parking spots required, which is different from the C2 and the A's we talked about. It's just tough because in the summer, this this whole area fills up as it is, and we'd be added two more stores or one big one. That was kind of my point is that we all know there is no parking spots to be had down there all summer yeah. long. But really, you're not adding two stores because there's already a liquor store there. Fair. 24 units. That's true. Pardon me? Right. Correct. On, on option A. So if we. If you brought the restaurant down there, though, 
Well, that would increase the demand on parking down there, obviously. Well, there's there's not currently a lot of parking where no, the restaurant is. That's my point. There's right. zero parking, zero parking well, down there all summer long. I mean, it's pretty 30 tough 30 to 40. get a parking spot just to go in and have some pizza. Um, unless they park up in lot. I mean, that lot is gets a, gets yeah. a lot of parking. So again, I I, I love the idea. I do. Yeah. Um, How about if we want like one and three quarters parking stalls and make them go to forty two, not double, but. Assuming there'll be a couple that just have one car, and some could have three, but more likely they'll, it's one and two. Well, yeah, the question is though, do you? That's four more stalls they got to get us all. How does the? Yeah, if you go back to the parking, we, we maxed out the. What, what they'd have to do is figure another way to do it. I mean. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is with yeah. the, with whatever kind of <laughs> contract they have with the owner, with the owners, do they, do you force them to, if they're gonna, if it's gonna be a pay per stall type of deal. I think it would just be, the stall would be yeah, included. It, right, the stall yeah, would be, almost, one for sure as, be included. Yeah, in right, possibly like Matt the, said, you'd be forcing them to, to park out on the streets then if they don't want to buy a stall. So well, it's, with, what I think they'd have to do is one stall, they have to have one stall. They'd pay for it if they want a second one for a second car. They would right, charge them for it. Right. And like you said earlier, Dave, a lot of these uh, residents are probably going to be uh, leaving in the winter time, and, well, we, yeah, and yeah, a lot of them, you know, don't have that many vehicles, to be honest. If you well, that's what's hard, you know, but but if it does, you know, it's it's, like it's max, right. if, when they are here, you want the maximum mm -hmm. number. When they're all in Florida, we don't really care. So then... But what's the maximum? <laughs> what's the reality? Um, so here we've got 36 required, and we're providing 38. Mm -hmm. So right there, we're, we're kind of in between your uh, 42 and your 36 already. So... That's with the entrance from Orange Street, though. Right, so we are losing some some spots on Orange Street on that one. But, yeah, if we go to... Uh, so maybe, go we by. Can, maybe we can excavate further further back. Yeah, that unexcavated area on the right. And we get could... Get more spots in there. So, so here, if you went with Plan A, can you get all your parking in from uh, Front Street instead of coming in off of Orange? Uh, it did no, be no, because the level is ten feet lower. Because of the elevation, so right? Street is up here, and the so front, the front street's here. You there's your two no. levels of parking. So the so the two they would or three they would, we would lose. I'd say now you're going to provide parking on Front Street parallel in front of their building. No, we didn't. We didn't lose any because they got a boardwalk now on Front Street. If you look, so their boardwalk in front of Front Street, we'd make them do parallel parking there to be public parking. And lose the boardwalk. Well, no, right, right. They would lose the boardwalk on the riverside at street level if they have one. And we, we would, they could provide three or four there, and we'd lose the three up on Orange Street for their parking if they do two levels and they went three residential units, three levels of units. Does that make sense? And then I just, you know, if you guys get an extra four, somehow squeeze them in there, tell them compact cars and walls and stars be a little narrower, tell them to be all thin people. They're afraid doors. Bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I, that's Scooter. my thought. I, I'd right. never right. see that. Golf carts. Golf carts. I don't have a problem with the three three levels of residential. I'd like to see four more parking stalls. Then. Just I'm pushing What's a little the, bit. What was that, Mayor? Is that the maximum, like, yeah. just on your plan, is that the maximum you can get in that space? For parking? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because we only have so much space. Yes. Yeah, and that's the architect's interpretation of what we can do. So we can go back to the drawing board and look at it again and see if we can change things around. But, you know, there's so much of a turning radius and so much to back out. And actually, the Hudson project we looked at was very tight. Right, and that was, that was tighter than what I would like. Right, yeah. they've got a parking issue in Hudson as well. It's just just as bad as Prescott, if not worse. So. I wonder if you took your elevator shaft and your stairs and put it on that interior corner and provide at least two more parking stalls there. Those are cons. I know, but I'm just telling them that they're looking at ways. <coughs> that corner, though, that might, might be able to do that. If we took the uh, uh, can, I know why they boardwalk off for parking, like you potentially suggested, would we lose uh, pedestrian travel around the building? When I first saw this, I thought that boardwalk would look awesome because it right. would keep, right. keep the pedestrian yes. traffic up and out of the way versus down the road. You know, they can go across the street, but... You still have the existing sidewalk. Sorry, what? You still have the existing sidewalk. 
just that's on the river side though the existing side there's not an existing sidewalk on on the building side of front street right now if on orange street there. on orange street yeah yeah it's you've still got the sidewalk there correct yep and then you but have a the sidewalk that we put in on the just river across side. the street on the river side correct yep any ideas for nail clipping uh, you know, I guess we don't have to nail it down for what now. For the for the old uh, for the your building down there, what might go there? For which one? This this one? That this is it. No, I mean the retail. Oh. Um, <laughs> we've we've had a few people. Obviously, the liquor store is one, and the Tapa Teas is one. Uh, I've talked to different uh, companies in town, insurance, uh, legal. Uh, people that are interested for sure well, I can imagine yeah. I think it's a great spot it is a great spot and I think it's a, it would be a nice addition I have had some concern from community members about putting more condos down there but right. I don't know that that's I don't think that that's an issue but because of the elevation because of the line site just because there was such a hubbub with the Eagle Point ones sure so I'm not sure I think it. I think we can do more. Yeah. I don't see it blocking too many people's view. Right, there's already structures on the on the river. Right. It actually might block my approach. Because I can see that train broken all night from where I sit. Now we just have to get them to stop honking the horn when they come. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, doesn't happen anywhere else. Well, we've been down that road. All right, we'll work on that one next. Yeah. What does the city have to maintain it once they build it? And it's not cheap once you maintain it. Railroad will put it in, but once it's put in, if I'm not mistaken, I don't remember, Rob. Then they, they hand it over to the city and say, grand. you're in charge of maintaining this crossing, now all the noise. And, and the, you the take liability for any accidents. <coughs> that's the last I remember. That's what, that's that's what they told us. All right. That's half reason why we said, mm -hmm. All right, what do we think, guys? I say, you know our concerns. Yes. Throw something back at us. All we right. threw you some stuff out. We don't have to solve it. We know it all later. Well, let me do this now. I'd like to see a little more parking. If you're going to take away a little bit of off-street parking, provide it somewhere else. And I like the. I don't mind the four four stories. I like the fire department's opinion. I just would add them, and I think they're more worried about you know you're built right out the corner. If they had to come around the north side to help fight a fire, how's that look? They want to make sure they're not too close to the building, and there's a hydrant down there. But that's something. I to a biome, I said just let staff know, and so that if they find something out, they let you know. But I'm comfortable with three levels of. I didn't think so. Well, I think it's a great idea. I'd like to see the, the, the site vision of it just okay. a little bit, too. I would like that, to see the site vision as well. I don't well. think it'll block much, but. Yeah. I just curious. As long as it's only Kate's view, I don't know. Yeah, really, I agree. <laughs> so, okay. I think it, I don't know. I get So just. Do you want to? Do you want them to come back? Something? Well, this is just our concept, so now we told them. Now they're going to start thinking a little harder and draw a little more detail. Matt? I do think, in just in terms of direction, if you're giving them the direction of what, give us a new concept plan for us to look at, or if you're saying we're good with option A or A1, move forward with design and bringing that forward, it would just be, I think, overall. Well, I, I think we all said option A1 is fine, or A one. is fine. Either one. I'm saying either one, yeah. I yeah, think either, either one. Either option. We're like brick okay. on the river side. Maybe a little a little break up on the Orange Street side. And I'd like to see, you know, if we get another four parking stalls, that'd be nice. So just to follow up on that, if, if option A is the one of the options that's okay, are, okay, are you, is the recommendation from Plan Commission the three or four spots that are going to be removed for their entrance off Orange Street that they have to replace those? If that is the direction they go, or are you say? We're fine with those being removed. Nope, I want them to add along the front of their building. I don't want to lose any parking. They're going to want as much as they want too, but I don't want to lose any <coughs> city park. So what you're saying is parallel parking along Front Street there. If that's what they can figure out, or they buy another spot. They to lose that boardwalk, but. Or maybe, maybe well, of course they can't. Mm -hmm. say maybe they ask the city to take that city lot that everyone crosses and put parking over that's there. That's what I was just going to say. They, <laughs> and they would pay to put it in. We could. And still yeah. give access to the right. people over there. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that you, you, yeah. know, you look outside the box. I'm not necessarily who, saying. Who would pay to put it in? Well, well, I mean, you have, because you're taking oh, I would? You, so you have to replace those three. <laughs> you know I mean? Just those three. I'm not oh, you're saying, wouldn't, you're saying not, it wouldn't work? King's uh, House. Just to the north of the entrance. Perfect. 
front oh, street. That yeah. big grab or whatever, maybe they just dig that out, make three stalls there, and they still right, on the north side, so it'll be right here. You know, just something oh, like sure. that. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, I like that idea. I don't mind that idea. Because yeah. yeah. you're taking away could, from us, and you could be angled parking course. right there, even. You know, something like that. Just yeah. I, options. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so in, the, in that scenario right now, we're showing, well, on the on option A, we're showing an entrance here, but we could still maybe possibly enter from from Front Street and have parking on this end. Then. I think because it's a triangle piece, maybe you can get a little further north and still have your, mm -hmm. your loop in. Yeah, no, I, right. Again, I, I, without, mm -hmm. So just a thought, and then the city would have to prove that, but anytime you're giving us parking or at least replacing, we'll let you mm -hmm. prove our spot. Right. Matt? I think it would just be helpful to have a motion probably to make sure that what we're bringing to council has the exactly what the planning motion, commission is uh, looking I for. I make a motion to approve the concept plan A or A1. Um, if they remove parking, they replace it. I'd like to see some type of brick or brick veneer on the riverside. Orange Street side, break it up. It shouldn't be just a tin or a siding necessarily. Maybe a little brick, a little. And I think that's what one of your plans showed. Mm -hmm. And what was the last one? And probably to, I'd like to see it provide four more stalls. Underground. Just four more stalls. It was three, now it's four. <laughs> you, you're talking inside, right? I'm talking inside. I'm talking your inside stuff. If you can provide that. And, and I'm just recommending that it doesn't mean that's the final say. But I like to see it go to 42 instead of 38. And to not lose the outside three. Right. Right. Does that motion make sense, Carter? I bet you got it down right, JT. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Anything else that I missed or that we talked about that you want done? I think we're okay with the three or the. You know, 35 or 45. So. I need a second motion. Dave made a motion. We need a second. Oh, you second? I second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any Correct. discussion on the motion? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. a lot for the All right. Thanks a lot. I like the idea. <laughs> I like the idea, too. It looks great. Great. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Thanks, then guys. how do we... Is this the... you got to come back with the final thing. No, 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 I'm not. I'm, I was going to say, is this a group that tries to figure out parking in downtown? Well, we could recommend it, yes. I it also makes the ultimate decision and everything. I know, I think I think maybe we should have a planning session on that at some point. Or me. Talk to the chair. <laughs> get on the Let's get that on the agenda. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, next item on the agenda zoning code review, chapter 635. Are you ready for that? Yep. So yeah, first we're going to talk about accessory structures, and then after Bob will come up and finish with the other items. So some context uh, contents. We talked about accessory structures last time. We thought it would be a good idea to bring it back and kind of go through it again. So we'll be going through some background, uh, the accessory structure height, and the current limit that we have. So some background on the accessory accessory structures. This is the current definition in our zoning code, and it essentially means any detached structure that is a subordinate use to the principal structure. Um, so then it's like, what is a structure? And a structure is essentially any building, erection, construction. Uh, so it really encompasses anything. Um, so that is just something to keep in mind going forward. Um, so the first thing we look at is the accessory structure height. Uh, we currently have a 15-foot maximum for accessory structures. Uh, looking at a lot of the surrounding communities, this may not be easy to read, but uh, a lot of them adhere to a height limit not to exceed the principal structure. Uh, that would be those three, River Falls, Hudson, Cottage Grove. Red Wing says uh, not over two stories in height. Uh, so essentially the same thing with the exception of three-story houses. Uh, you would be able to go through stories with an accessory structure. Um, so height would be measured from grade level at the front building line to the highest point of roof. Um, and our code also does specify by roof type. Uh, I'm not a construction guy, so I don't really know. It's like mansard roof, uh, a couple others. So um, it will go to the highest point of the specified roof in our zoning code. Um, so changing the height limit would ease the restriction on accessory structures. You'd be able to essentially double uh, your square footage by staying within the same rear yard coverage. So that's something to think about. And then the accessory structure limit we spoke about last time. Uh, currently, we do not count at attached garages. I think that was kind of a confusion point in the last meeting. We don't count those. Um, they're considered a part of the principal building. 
Um, so aside from that, we have a limit of two accessory structures on a lot. Um, as lot size increases, the number of accessory structures does not increase, but the size of your accessory structure can increase without going over that 30% rear yard coverage and within your setbacks, of course. Um, so the rear yard coverage does not uh, include side yards either, um, so that creates kind of a loophole in the code. <coughs> so an example here, <coughs> a, the largest lot, uh, this is now one of the larger lots in Prescott, they are allowed both um, uh, two accessory structures and one large accessory structure in the back um, and they're still within their rear, rear lot coverage and whatnot. And then a smaller lot in Prescott, uh, this is the smallest currently that you can do, 8,500 square feet. Uh, they are still allowed two accessory structures uh, utilizing the side yard as well. Uh, and they are within their 30 percent. Uh, Sorry, can you go back to the last slide? Sure. Is that your house? <laughs> So you're saying this lot could have three? This lot can have two, but one could be large, like the 30 by 40 work shed. So you wouldn't, you would still have to, you know, keep it under two. But with that, obviously, a larger rear yard, uh, the 30 percent is larger as well. So you could build a bigger. Um, so if we go back to here, one, you could potentially build something like this. Obviously, a larger rear yard, more yard maintenance, riding lawnmower maybe, a smaller rear yard not as much lawn, maybe a push mower, this is all you would need really. So that's something that you could build, whereas a larger lot, that's something you could build. So there, um, is there any opposition to increasing that limit to three or expanding with the lot size? If there's if the minimum lot size, you can have three or just make I it? I like it. Well, but, and I know what you're saying, but then it's, you know, you're putting them up like this, why not just add on to what you have? Is what I'd say, and you still you still could increase your detaches as you add on to it. Yeah. Depending on your property size, shape, you might not be able to add on to what you have. That's kind of that's my concern too. I, I think that there's going to be certain circumstances where three years would be a lot more doable than one really big one. I'd pick on you and say you both have poor planning because you said they should have ten foot ceilings instead of nine. That's poor planning on their part. You're saying same with a detached structure. And I'm being smart, Alec, but that's what I would say. You know what? You should plan if you want to think you're going to expand. You should plan so you can expand it. I don't really have a problem if it's two or three. I just after a while, how many do they have? Ten. The problem is once you have, if you have, you know, some a smaller lot, and also you have it's just full of accessory structures. Right. Three little, three little. They barns. still have to meet the thirty percent. Right. But it's still three barns. That might look cluttered to some people. Which I don't care. I'm pretty laid back. It's I don't think it's going to happen very frequently. But I, just, I don't. You're right. I just think that you're right. But if you're the head person's neighbor. Yeah. We don't get the phone three call. Three still. Two, two versus three, I feel like we're right there anyways. <laughs> Plus, could we Not break down? Sure enough. Like, could you break it out to, like, what is a permanent structure, auxiliary structure, and a non-permanent auxiliary structure, like a shed? Maybe you could break it out so that you could... Permanent was attached to the ground. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. These are only permanent? Well, well, you can put it on skids. Everything. You can stop, put it on skids, but in reality, it's every building's movable. I can move a garage and jack it up, move it, you know. But they're all they're there for a reason. A former town I lived in, if it, if it was fixed to the ground, it mattered, and if it wasn't, it didn't, or something like that. And I'm not 100 percent on that. I just am going off of memory from when I put a slab in. Sometimes size they might let you get away with that, but the little. But I was just thinking, how could you could how could you control the the conversation? What we're talking about using that kind of terminology of fixed or not fixed, you know, maybe you can... That's too hard. I, I know what you're saying, but I, I enforce it in a different city. It's tough to enforce. Well, it's considered fixed and unfixed. Oh, it's got a slab. No, it doesn't have a slab. It has uh, uh, four by fours, and it, it can be slid around. Well, I can probably pick a slab upside around. But so, you know, what's fixed? Really, you built it there to stay. You're not going to, oh, I'm moving tomorrow. I'm taking my shed with me. Not too many people are doing that. So it's really a permanent structure. I don't have a problem with three. You still go to thirty percent, like Rob said. Well, like the picture he, he has up there, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that size that was. Yeah, yep. That's still not that small. That, small that, lot. that little shed there is a rubber made. You buy it at Home Depot for eight hundred bucks, and we're calling that a garage. Ultimately, you know, it, it's equivalent to, and that, I don't know if that's appropriate. But I'd say, but because you poorly planned and built a lot of small ones, that's all you afford. Isn't the reason you should have five of those? That's I think what well, we're not saying to have five. Huh? Well, I know, I, I told yeah. it out there. One, one's enough, enough. Two, right. three, four. Pretty soon, well, I think I should have three of them because 
I still have more junk and I don't, I don't want to pay for Rubbermaid instead of a nice permanent structure. I get the, the fight the, the junk conversation, but you also can't you can't tell people that live here they can't to an extent yes, do you well right you can but they're gonna move to Oak Grove or Clifton and maybe they should, but you know, I'd rather have people that can build a garage stay in town. Mm -hmm. But that's not a garage, that's, that's not a garage, rubbermaid. But you know what I mean? So that's why I say how many rubbermaids do you get? That's right. that, that's the question I throw out there. Again, if, if, if John and you think three is fine, you know, as long as they stay in thirty percent. I, I don't know, staff, do you have an opinion on it? You I guys mean, have more calls. I know it makes it more complex to say, well, if your lot is a certain size, then you can have three. But, I mean, are we getting too complicated now? I think in terms of if we're looking at accessory structure limits, if we're looking to increase it, I would, I would think staff would much more prefer to just up the limit by one and get into the whole debate of what's fixed versus unfixed and get in because then you're talking about a very complicated method of trying to enforce things and get into more discussion, if you will, with with uh, residents. So I would I would think that would be the preferred route. So just a question that. on this. So we're talking like a six by five by five foot high rubber made from Menards that you throw out in the back. Is that considered an accessory structure? Yes. Okay. Technically, yes. I just wanted to confirm that. As long as no one complains about it, probably would never get noticed. Yeah. That's where I find it like kind of tough to buy, like by the limit of it, because you could have, depending on the size of your property, you could have a nice size property, like illustrated in the in the large property, yeah. and you could yeah. have your, you know, your your yard set up in such a manner that you got you accidentally got a few structures, and they're really nicely done, and you know, for different purposes and whatever, and you'd be limited by this, but you know, and for what, but. So, next, this, this one's an example of one with four accessory structures. Um, you can see them pointed out here. They have a gazebo, shade structure type thing, another tool shed. They have a detached, larger shed, and then a swimming pool. Uh, this, they come under their rear yard, co rear yard coverage by our code, um, but they are over their accessory structure limit by two. Um, Wait, a swimming pool counts? Yes, an in in ground swimming pool. Okay. This is what I'm kind of talking about, though. This exactly. Isn't like crazy overdone. It is It is a little clunky, but it's this is my, my example of what <clears throat> maybe not necessarily inappropriate. It looks like he's got a decent yard around his property, yet he's not right on If you have a pool and a small pool uh, shed, shed for, the, yeah. for the pool toys, and then you want to have a shed out back and you, have a, and you have a large yard and you want to shed for your lawnmower, I mean, yeah, I right, think that's exactly. reasonable. So pool is considered an accessory structure? Currently, yes. I'd call it an accessory use and I'd put under lot coverage, you can only have 50% lot coverage and say that covers lots that's not permeable. Then I'd call it a structure, that's only my opinion because I don't, I, I don't come in as a structure necessarily. I wouldn't have, have thought that. But. I think a structure has walls and but even a gazebo. I think well, the structure has walls and a roof. That's my. You know, so even this here, he'd be over if you excluded the pool. By no, by number, yeah. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. Not counting that, but that's just my thought. Mm -hmm. Probably yours too, but yeah, yeah. Three structures, yeah. That's it is. So again, if you want to go to three, I don't so care. What, per but. what percentage of houses in the town of Prescott do you think? Half that room. Have that? Five five percent of the, So you're gonna change all the rules to accommodate five percent of the people well, to <coughs> to increase to increase the workflow to your city staff for five percent of the people. And what, why is there an increase to work to city staff? Well, who who has to go out and make sure you Enforce have to force it? For that? <laughs> Don't we got a guy for that? Well, the back of this packet? Okay, just because you come to the city and say, I want to build an accessory, another accessory structure, they don't know how much yard you have or how much coverage you have. They're going to come out and inspect your property. Somebody has to. That's not free. And that's that takes time. Somebody's got to come out. You, so if I buy, buy a, a sun, right? sun made chasing boom. Menards, I'm supposed to come to the city and say... Building permit? If I'm not building anything, though, I'm just buying it and setting it in my... Nobody's going to do that, but like, say like this one here where you got to... I'm just saying so you you're pool. changing the rules for... I think, the rule, I think the rule was too limiting to begin with, is, is my point. Yeah, Me too. I think so. I think it was too limiting to begin with. 
So yeah, some conclusions then. Uh, if we want to raise the height, the accessory structures, um, some of the questions that you guys already proposed about the limit, um, and then potentially we were discussing if we would want to add a requirement uh, for accessory structures, exterior facade, to be complementary to a principal structure, potentially if it's over a certain amount of square footage, like a detached garage or something of the sort. I like the idea of raising the height to the principal structure. I'd be curious though, does that, so like let's say you've got a sloped property and the back of your property slopes down and washes out and it's lower by a lot. Like there's a house in particular that um, goes I, over I, by yeah. behind the fireworks stations back on the back row there. It's got a I nice think I, yeah, I understand. So is if, that still? You would measure, so your principal structure, you would measure from the front building line to the peak and that would be your height and then your accessory structure would not be able to go over that height. So maybe in the backyard your, your principal structure looks 45 feet tall from the front building line and maybe 35 feet tall. Sure. So then you go from the front building line. Not at all in the primary structure, I bet. Yeah. I don't have a problem with saying that the height of an accessory cannot be taller than the primary structure with a maximum of, let's say, 20 feet. So you don't want to go more than two stories. Because it's going to have a three Yeah, but 20 feet, I mean, that's more than two. Like, you've got a roof. Well, that's something if your roof is 10 feet and your house might be 10, that'd be 20 on a, on a two story, I'm thinking, if you have a two story. I don't want to go. I don't want a big three-story just because you have to have a three-story house. You have this. No, what I'm saying you're saying not to say 20 feet. So you're you're saying you can build a two-story accessory structure as long as the primary structure is that tall. Okay, so you'll tell me this. So here's floor one, floor two, but now I got roof. Yeah, I don't. Th there's no way. You, I mean, 24 maybe, but 20 is probably even not. 24 is not enough. Yeah. I mean. So do we want that tall? And I get I, I threw a number out there because I don't. Well, I guess 15 is. We already got 15. It could be. The fifteen be, just changed, and that's. Um, well, I think what you just. What, what do you mean say the maximum? There should be no maximum. How many three-story houses? I would. I would say without a maximum, it would be difficult to verify. I'd have to look for old building plans to see the height of the principal structure or measure it somehow. Can with, you measure yeah. it somewhere? So they don't get up on the roof, and you get, and they can have, the, you get the smart end, they can have the dummy. Yeah, thing. that's another way. <laughs> but it just seems to make the most sense, not greater than your principal structure. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I'm all right with that. I guess, well, but that, but that's what that's what Kate has, and that's what some people got up for because her her detached as tall as her primary, and something that's too tall. And well, it's it's not it's I, as tall, but it's up. Right, okay. actually, from grade, it's probably the same height. That I know what you mean. So that's the thing. Some people that's where it was changed to begin with. It changed back to fifteen. Yeah, I remember they would have changed and then mm -hmm. changed back. It was primary, so and then, then we're looking to change it back to what it was before. <laughs> I kind of like it. I didn't find it that. Well, can, we, can we say that it can't exceed the height of the primary structure? The highest point of the the highest point of the primary structure. It cannot exceed that height. Correct. That way, we, 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 well, that, that's what we are saying. Kind of here. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly what we're saying. That's, that's what that's, that's what that's saying. Yes. Yeah. So are you saying not exceed the primary <clears throat> height? Height of the primary structure based on whatever elevation it's at. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That would be what. So if you're if the back of your yard is elevated, you can't build it higher. No, 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 you, you can't. Yeah. On Carter, said, Carter said that on the yeah. plan in the front. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm content with that. Don't matter. I like that too. <laughs> I like that well. back in Carter is a back in is a basketball corks considered a. Uh, it. Pavement in the ground would be, yes, a permanent structure, yeah. That's just the way our code is written so currently. Change that, John, I don't totally agree with it either. So I'm just saying, for people who have a pool or a basketball court, uh -huh. two seems like a very limiting number of accessory structures. Do you guys receive a lot of complaints about, about this? Uh, mm -hmm. Since I've been here, I think I've received one complaint okay. about the max. It's not like a high flow of complaints, and so if we bumped it up to three, probably most people are uncompliant currently. I would guess. Anyways, mm -hmm. for two to three. You know, depending on when you start to consider like you own my hot tub stroke. The pad it sits on might be. Right, you got a hot tub pad. Too much time. You got a rake, you got a rake closet and yeah, too bad. That's all you get. You know, See, I, I, but, but but listen, you guys, I like to take the pools and the backyard patios and basketball courts and put them on the separate. code 
under lap coverage, you can only cover so much. Because we don't want all the storm water runoff. Yeah. Yep. Not only does that, that is good, but it also makes sense you know, for, uh, for a member the, of the community yeah. to look at that and think that their pool is an auxiliary structure and now you get two. It's like, well, that would put everybody up in arms, I bet. No, I think it would too, because then I guess but, I would never have thought of that. But right. the accessory structure and the pools. If they want under lot coverage, you know, we don't want to have all hard surface muddy water going yeah. in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that's where, oh, well, sorry, you've got too much lot coverage, you can't put that accessory structure on because your lot coverage is too Right. Lot. Which is, that's the current thing, right? I mean, we've already got the 30% thing, right? No. 30% 30, 30 for just detached structure. I don't have the, I don't think it talks about and that's, lot coverage. That's just the rear yard, so that wouldn't include side yards for anything. That's just accessory buildings. Now I think you'd, you'd talk about lot coverage and uh, under storm water or something. You don't have so much lot coverage. The rear yard, or the total yard, or something. That's just my, you know, if we if we want to do I, that, I agree with that. Put it on the agenda for next time and talk about the definitions and maybe moving some of that to a lot coverage issue if it's in the code somewhere. So, just so I understand, I guess follow up question is: Are on top of that? Are we ask? Are we stating then one additional accessory structure is allowed? I don't have a problem with that. I guess. I that's what I have to have. As long as it falls under the 30%. 30%. Mm -hmm. okay. So explain that again, Carter. 30% is to so take the rear yard area, yeah. and you can only cover 30% of that. Yeah, rear so yard. if you look at that red area, it, uh, by our definition in our code, the rear yard is a parallel line from the furthest extent of your principal structure okay. to the backyard or the back lot line. So this is your rear yard, and it's kind of a loophole because this is kind of no man's land. It's not side yard. It wouldn't be definable as rear yard. You don't know what it is because it's, you know, this side of this part of this, the house, and it's How do other cities do this? Yard. I mean, did, does anybody yeah, just do clunky. I do it differently. I do the whole, whatever you face of the back, that's where I measure the rear yard. Because that does that change? That's how I've, I've done it in the past. And so we, we've, I've looked at it in the past. I've done it from the... Face kind of the, the, back the inverse, the first portion of the principal structure that faces right the rear. Yeah. It just gets a little bit hard. I mean, you don't have too many L-shaped houses, but that's really when it, it right. uh, so comes That's right, so you do it from the well, back face of the house. house. I think maybe when you get to a weird house like this, you could measure it however you want. And well, if you're the, close, then you could say, okay, you you know, measure well, up here, you know. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I would say I would measure from the back side of the house. It'd be fun to clean this up, though. It's yeah. So it would, it would extend the all the way to the back. I'd side send of it house. back, but then you're going to take out that area that has a structure on it, and you know that doesn't. You can't use that for your thirty percent. You know oh, that mean? makes sense. Yeah. So you take the back of your house, you can draw a line, and then take that that has coverage on already. You take that out, and that can't be used in the thirty percent. But you're still using the backyard as much as possible. Make sense? Yeah, John, no. So what it, what it is. What do you mean by can't use it in the 30%? Well, so you know, it's already covered. It's you'd already this, covered. You say this is the back of your house and just draw a rectangle. Mm -hmm. and say, okay, that's the square of your backyard, but then take this part out of there mm -hmm. so that can't be used in that 30%. Oh, yeah, pool. yeah. That's what I mean. I got you. I thought you were talking about the pool. No, no, no. I was talking the structure. Yep. Sure <laughs> so I guess just one last follow up per the questions we had. Is there any opposition to if their building is over and a certain less square feet that it has to be some sort of um, complementary to the actual principal structure so it can't just be a, a galvanized block. steel shed with a siding? Yeah. I like that. But I mean, if, I think yours matches the color of your house. No, it doesn't match the color of my house. That was a big argument. So, <laughs> sorry. All right, well, then I guess that's the question. So do we want to match the, do we want it to match the principal structure any, or do you not really worry about it? I say we don't worry about it. That's my opinion. I agree with that. I agree with that. Right there, you got your answer. <laughs> so just to be clear, we're, we're, we're perfectly fine with the steel galvanized shed that's 10,000 square feet I heard. being in the, okay. Most people don't, wouldn't probably go to galvanize, but there's a couple. Yeah, most well, otherwise, you, otherwise you're going to say you can't put your Home Depot Menards thing back there because it's not going to match the house. Well, uh, and, but we'd have a, 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 over a minimum. So, so, oh, so if it was like, like a detached garage, 25 one, right? by 25. Yeah, anything over 200 square feet has to match the house. I would actually maybe lean the other way then on that. I don't know. Any, any structure over 200 square feet, which isn't very big, 10 by 20, it's a small garage. 
Depending over that, you'd say it should match the color to complement the house. Yeah, it would just have to be complementary. It wouldn't have to directly match the same color. color. But, color. But then what's your interpretation of complementary? Right. Who decides that? Who decides that? The architectural committee? Well, yeah. That's something you pull a permit for, right? And you get well, reviewed on it and you get approved for it, right? And if Carter... If yeah, Carter if Carter gets bucked on it, come to this commission, we can make it as a group or uh, a group decision. Mm -hmm. There you go. You know what I mean? You can say something on that order. The policy is it's made by the zoning administrator. If someone totally objects with his interpretation, it could go to the planning commission. And then make that a policy, not an ordinance, but a policy. Write it up, write it up in a policy. I like that. I guess to be fair, I don't ever drive by your place and think it doesn't look good. And I think that's overall what we're trying Thank to. You. Not so it's not like a big, I just. Oh, this is an eyesore. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> So if we could change that. Anything greater than 200 square feet, it has to be confirmed to the accessory structure determined by the zone administrator. And if, if there's a, a total objection, it can come to the planning commission. I like that part. Yeah. And make that. Because we have different color, but you would say, oh, those two colors look good. They look okay where he yeah. thinks it looks terrible because he's got a bad taste in color. I don't know. There we go. <laughs> That's just it, right? <laughs> yeah. Can we move it on? Yeah, I think you got enough answers? Oh, yeah. All right, thanks, guys. Okay. The landscaping proposed division. Well, we may revisit some of the same discussion when we get to the architectural standards, but we'll see what happens here. Yeah. Hit the high points. <laughs> That's what I would say. That's all I'm going to hit is the high points. You, you folks can uh, take me down the rabbit hole wherever you want. For the most part, right? So, um, all right. So. Again, uh, nice to be back again. Uh, we are getting close to, to the end of what we were under contract, at least to kind of look at here. So uh, uh, I'm, I, I think that, uh, that the discussion that both staff and the council has had has been very, uh, I think, very beneficial to getting you an ordinance that is probably closer to what you expect uh, and what you want than maybe what you have currently. Uh, I still have, you know, some some uh, some cross-referencing and stuff. So some of the colors that you've seen come through, those are there for me, just so I don't forget to cross-reference and pick up the uh, cross the T's and dot the I's. Uh, there is uh, at least uh, some places where there, you see some red text, and that's where I'm really looking for for mm -hmm. plan commission direction. And I'll 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 uh, I'll uh, point that out as we get there tonight. There's at least one. Uh, and and as as uh, as the chair said, this is an overview. Uh, I'm not going to go line by line, mm -hmm. uh, but I will stop at any point and 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 drill down as far as the commission needs to go on this stuff. So, uh, so with that, um, landscaping. You know, uh, I think that you know uh, currently the stuff that you've been talking about. I think that you're going to want maybe some standards just just going forward, just just for, so that things look appropriate uh, the purpose is really straightforward you know just trying to get things to look to improve the visual, visual character <laughs> of, of the community uh, you know and the, the landscape standards you know uh, they're, they're pretty straightforward there is a there is a chart in the back uh, with with LS1 through LS7 I believe that talks about maybe maybe how many of, of certain things you need doesn't tell you what you need yet you know but it, but it, but so it leaves that up to the uh, up to the developer and to the applicant um, uh, the plant materials, I think, is important. Uh, you, you know, going to require native plants rather than rather than exotics. Uh, and uh, and hardy for this region, it's actually going. It's actually a, a 4B. Uh, that's a typo. So it'll be a, instead of a 4A. The hardiness zone for uh, for Prescott is a 4B. Uh, and and we're not going to allow uh, uh, any any invasive species. So uh, to go in there. Uh, the landscape standards, you know, uh, those those are the L1 through L7. If you look through there, it just talks about the number the number of, of plants that you would need, and and the the place before tells you kind of well they got to be native species, they can't be uh, and they can't be uh, invasive. Uh, and that, but there are some some standards in terms of how big is big, and you know so that you don't get uh, say you need a tree and you get somebody trying to come in with a little a little whip and say well there I've met my I've met my ordinance you know or, or met the standards. Um, but you know right now. Now, you know, I put this in there, this 70% coverage, you know, so what it says is that, you know, after after five years of whatever you, your planting area is, 70% of it has to be, has to be covered. And 
you know, uh, as I thought about that and, 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 and put on my zoning ministry, I had to say, you know, that's really pretty kind of tough, you know. A, on staff, you know, to, to, to strap them with, with five years. And B, uh, lands, properties change considerably. In five years, you know, uh, somebody else may inherit someone else's problem. So I don't know that that's really uh, in, 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 in a lot of people's best interest. And so... I would I would consider having having that removed or, or or modified substantially so that it isn't it isn't such a burden on staff. Um, uh, uh, there's installation maintenance. Uh, that, that's pretty that's pretty standard. Uh, you know, in terms of, of putting this landscape standards that they have to follow, and, and it's going to really be up to staff to review the plans and to say yes or no uh, that that it does that it does comply. And there will be a learning curve, but I think that is that it's it's not rocket science. I mean, there's not that many plants that that we really get uh, in here, and so those those plans would be would be reviewed by. By staff and, and the zoning administrator, uh, and then the plant material standards. Those there's there's nothing in here that that is really unusual uh, from from a from a planting standpoint. Uh, and then, but there is a piece that you know for 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 properties that are wooded or that that are already uh, uh, have have a lot of plant material that if that if the developer would would save those plant materials that there's there's there, there's an incentive for them. But, you know, so if they, for every tree they save, they can reduce two. But if that tree dies, then you get back to, you, you put back two. So you're back to, you're back to square one. So you don't lose anything if, in fact, the tree dies. Um, and then uh, the vision triangle is important that, uh, that we understand that these planting materials um, can't obstruct, you know, the vision triangle. And, and so this cross-reference back to, uh, to uh, 635-64 with the vision triangle. For that. You know, I... There's a there's a matrix in the back that talks about you know uh, um, what kind of application and and what kind of what kind of standards you need and so uh, we've gone through those with staff. Uh, I think they're they're pretty straightforward, uh, and I think we've covered most everything. And so from a high level, that's about as high level as I can get uh, uh, in terms of going over an ordinance. And so questions, concerns, comments uh, about landscaping, and I guess uh, staff. I you know I can turn it over to you guys as well as in terms of maybe things you thought of since uh, since we reviewed this. I guess just the one thing I would add is right now our code and one of the issues that we wanted to, and why we wanted to have this done was. Right now, our code requires everybody to submit, I mean, at least multifamily, commercial, industrial, to submit a landscaping plan. The problem is, is we have absolutely no requirements at all for them to meet. So it's like, they what submit a landscaping plan, plan and I'm planting grass. Well, I, we have nothing to judge it off of, so we can't say, well, this looks good or you need to do this. It's just like, okay, well, we'd like to see you plant some trees <clears> in the park. Yeah. So it just gives us the ability to at least say, these are the these are the items you have to meet in order to mm -hmm. meet our landscaping requirements. I like it. I like it too. Yeah. I'm not a big yeah. landscape person, but trees and whatnot are nice. Sometimes they make a nice landscape and kind of go with all the pilots. I mean, it's pretty nice. Commercial. We want to see something. A little something. Yep. Yep. So I, I like it. I don't all right. Really well. have any issues. Mobile tower siding. You know, there's 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 a heck of a lot in that in that section for for you guys to read. Uh, just to let you know that, that most of that is a boilerplate from the state. Uh, a lot of that stuff came right down and, and it's it's cut and paste. Uh, and and it's it's in place in in several communities and it, and it's and it's working fairly well. Uh, I would say that you know that that the that if we understand, you know, the, the first section where everything is defined, the next two sections then are pretty much cross reference and just go back to the first section. But but kind of some of the takeaways about this is that, you know, a permit is required for, for any tower. And and what was different about about this this language is that the state went back and defined, you know, a new tower versus co location. And and there's there's a class one and a class two co location now. Class one uh, is is uh, is that that is that these uh, uh, structural requirements are not necessary. So I could hang my antenna up there on, on, on an existing 
structure, but I don't have to modify that structure. So that's a class one co-location. A class two is if I'm going to co-locate, uh, uh, but it's too big or something happens and I need to make some modifications, then it's considered a class two. Those, and that's really the big difference other than going through and maybe defining a lot of the stuff. And I think that's why most of what uh, I'm going to present is maybe because there will be some definitions that weren't pre presented in, in here, but they will be in the uh, in the ordinance. So we just we defined we defined you know the, the what is a, a radio broadcast service and the search ring and the search ring becomes important uh, because you're 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 going to want to have uh, if they're going to come into town you want them to you want them to co-locate as much as possible rather than build new. And so what they'll do is is they'll define the search ring of 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 where you know what they're trying to serve and it'll be up to them to come back and prove to this to the city that in fact nothing nothing in that search ring is going to be co-locatable that's why they, they're going to need a new tower so that's an important that's really an important definition and then we talked about the class one and the class two co-location uh, what what those mean uh, mobile tower siting again you know all the stuff that we talked about in in, in, in the first one is it, it applies uh, by cross-reference uh, there's a couple of takeaways you know that you're gonna you know when, when they do this they're gonna proof a liability of at least a million but the city can your your council can can require what you want uh, we're suggesting one million the zoning administrator has the ability to to call in outside help you know bring in some reinforcements and that reinforcement would be on the dime of the applicant you know so the staff can have the resources they need if if it's a complicated uh, situation, or they just they just don't have the time to do it, uh, the permit fees and other charges, the you know the city will be able to set those uh, according to your schedule, and that would be modified according to what it is if if you need to modify it. Um, and then the application review uh, timelines, you know, you, there, there's, there's some deadlines in there just so that you can't drag your feet and, and never get an approval. So there's some timelines as to when certain things have to happen, otherwise they're considered approved. Uh, the permit transferability, a permit is valid for the person, you know, listed in the permit, you know, but it can be transferred if the property is sold or if there's a new lease tenant, you know. Uh, there are some structural design standards just to talk about, you know, that these things have to be able to stand on their own. And 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 and, uh, and that they're going to be certified. Uh, there's some setbacks, you know, for the fall zone, and and so currently it would be the height of the tower plus 10 percent, uh, unless um, th that area could be reduced, you know, with a with an engineering certificate that shows that it can collapse on itself in in a, in a smaller in a smaller area than than a city could allow less than less than the, the height plus the 10 percent. There's some standards in there as to, as to how you develop your site in terms of fencing and, and access and driveways and those types of things. And I think probably out of, out of the ordinance, I think this is probably the piece that is, that is probably the, the most important, at least in my opinion. <coughs> you know, uh, so you, we, have, we have a tower, uh, it's been there for a long time and, and for whatever reason, you know, they go out of business and they, they, they leave town. Uh, what happens to that tower? Well, you know, for the existing towers, you, you're going to figure out what you're going to have. This is this is all going forward. So, going forward, uh, you would you would you would have a uh, you would have a letter credit uh, performance bond. You know, something that says, but based off of an estimate of what it would take the city to come in and 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 clean that up if 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 the tower was to go defunct and they couldn't clean it up or they didn't clean it up as to maybe what the city thought it should be, <laughs> then the city could tap the letter credits uh, and those financial bonds to, to take care of it. This this way, at least the city isn't left holding the bag if, if they leave town and now you have a tower, what do you do with it? Uh, and then there's a, you know, you've talked about uh, in your other discussion, you know, if you know somebody somebody doesn't like the decision, there's always an, uh, an administration uh, section, there's an there's appeal and enforcement section of what would happen there, so. Um, uh, and then, so the same thing with the with the radio broadcast service facilities. You know, this is really, and this section really deals with you know those things that are radio stations and, and TV stations. And but the same the same rules apply that we just talked about. We define you know what the towers are and the mobile service support structures are and the mobile service facilities. What those things include, uh, just so that so <coughs> the staff is clear and, and the applicant is clear as to maybe moving forward. You know what they can do. But you know you're looking at. 
you're looking at that mobile service support structure, you know, and, and so it's important to realize, you know, that it's, and this comes into play when you're looking for a co-location, you know, that it can be a utility pole, a water tower, a building, any other structure, you know, that can, that can house that, that, that antenna so it can be co-location. You would consider that a, a, a mobile service uh, support structure. So it wouldn't have to be necessarily a tower, and that's why you can get a lot of use out of, out of tall things in, in the city. You know, people can put things on there, so... Uh, and then the same thing with the uh, with the uh, with the with the support service structures. You know everything that goes with the tower, those those the structures. And uh, and we just went through and made sure that we that we de defined the utility mounted antenna. So that you have a lot of utility poles. Some of those may be may be candidates for uh, for uh, uh, for uh, you know uh, telecommunications in the future. So just so that you know, leave as many options open for the city as you can, so that you don't have to get a new tower. And that, my friends, is in a nutshell, uh, community tower. What you have works, uh, but but it's out of it's out of it's out of step with standards. And so the, the only reason we're doing this is because this, the statutes have changed. So, questions, concerns, comments. When you say this is a lot of this is copy and paste from community to community, is it also in state level statutes? Yeah, I'll, I imagine so. That's where it came from as a boilerplate from the state, and a lot of communities just adopted it, you know, sure. rather than try to rewrite it. So, uh, yeah. so it came as a as a as a template from the state. This would make it into some of the discussions you just had about accessory structures, and so, um, um, so we're looking at we're looking at um, uh, some architectural standards. Staff was was looking at that, and and they're, they want to restrict it to multifamily, commercial, and industrial districts. You know, so not the residential. So it probably won't come into play with some of the discussion you had because that was pretty much residential discussion. Uh, I, I think what's important, the way that this is set up, uh, and, and, it, and it kind of flows with, with the way that you were dealing with the fellows here with the concept, with your PUD. Uh, the, the city had a lot of latitude in terms of what you can ask for. What, what, this, what this is getting away from, it's getting away from a prescriptive code where it says, okay, if you give us this, you get that, and then, then they give you exactly that, but that's really not what you really want or need. And so, uh, so, uh, so we've gone. We're proposing that you go from you know from that to to having having the applicant um, uh, provide um, proof, you know, evidence, you know, that 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 they are going to <coughs> adversely impact the adjacent properties. Uh, now that that may put that may require them to go out and seek the services of professionals, a landscape architect, an architect, maybe an engineer, or you know some other some other services. But the things that the things that uh, that that they would be looking at, and I think are things that are important to the uh, to the city, uh, you know, in terms of making sure that they aren't going to negatively impact adjacent property is context. You know, how does it fit the neighborhood and where it's at? You know, they'll have to describe that. The, the scale of it, you know, uh, you know, if, if if it was only a downtown, you know, and this, you know, making sure that the scale is, is is balanced in proportion to what's there, so that you 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 don't want something that's really tall or something real real tall. So so they would be proving that to to the uh, to staff would review it and then bring it to the to the to the commission, and it would be up it would be up to the commission to say yeah we agree or no we don't agree, and so and 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 or we need more information to to go with this. Uh, it, it, so you know, uh, unity. That's going to be important, especially if you have if you have multiple buildings. You're going to want to make sure that maybe those those buildings, you know, they all kind of kind of have the same design standards, if you will. Um, and in your storefronts, you, you know, if for your downtown, uh, making sure that 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 there is some consistency with what's on either side of that storefront, so that they don't stick out like a sore thumb. And also maybe just some controls on on what goes on the face of those, so that they they fit the downtown. They don't get real cluttered with 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 what's down there. Um, I, you know, I don't know. You know, the next piece it isn't in the, it isn't on here, but it's in your it's in your packet, and it's color and material elements. And um, you know, color color should be you know a non-reflective and, and high intensity. But but we've had this question in other communities. Well, what happens you know if uh, if uh, uh, a McDonald's or you know a franchise wants to come in and and their color scheme is just sticks out like a sore thumb because that's those are their those are their colors. 
A lot of other communities, you know, they still allow they still allow those those franchises to come in, but but they, they negotiate say, well, you know, can you just tone it down just so that it so that it fits with everything else around it? And you know, the example I give, if if you've been up to I've been up to Hayward, uh, you know, there's a there's a McDonald's in Hayward, and it looks it looks more like a log home and less like a McDonald's than any place I've seen. And they went out of their way, McDonald's, to, to fit into that neighborhood. And so it's, it's, not, it's not that they're not used to doing these things. So if you don't ask for things that make your downtown look better, then you're going to get the standard from, from those people. But, but if you tell them, you know, you're, we're okay with your logo, uh, just, you know, just that, that, that hot pink, could, could we find a way to tone it down a little bit, you know, just so it fits with, with everything else in there. And again, you know, there's, it's, there isn't, there isn't a, a formula, there isn't a cookbook, uh, so it's going to be a give and take, you know, with, between the developer and, and the city as to maybe, you know, what, what are the colors that you would get. And the one piece that's in here, I'm not sure, you know, just, just where you're down downtown is uh, uh, in terms of, of historic buildings. But if you have historic buildings, uh, e either designated or maybe come designated in the future, you know, there's a section that just talks about, you know, that the colors, the colors of things next to those historic buildings need to be similar uh, or to the period of time that they were built or that if you're going to be redoing those historic buildings, try to keep them in earth tones or the colors that they were intended when they were first constructed. So, you know, so I, I just highlighted that because I'm not sure where, where things are um, in, in, in the scheme of things where you're downtown. You talked a little bit about, about uh, accessory structures and, and it, this talks about accessory structures and, and that, that the materials need to be complementary. You know, it doesn't be exact, uh, but they need to be complementary so that, so that they look, they look like, like they fit. Um, we talked about the commercial zones and, and uh, uh, building lengths. You talked about a little bit just with the uh, with the, with the uh, with the, that PUD that um, you know maybe maybe you want to put a limit on how long is long and that once it gets a certain length and we're proposing in here that if it's a hundred feet uh, that you got to find some way to break it up uh, because it just becomes just becomes just too monotonous and and so so it, it talks about it in there and maybe just stepping it back or maybe some some changes in roof uh, there's all kinds windows there's all kinds of things just to break that facade up so that it isn't just one one continuous uh, uh, wall uh, and then metering and, and mechanicals you know try to get them set back so at least from from the from the street side of things that that they're that they're not they're not visible you know and maybe there's a parapet wall or maybe there's something else but but to get them back so that so that uh, so that they don't detract from from the downtown it's probably more important you know when you get into your downtown area maybe than maybe in some of the industrial but it but um, you know if it looks good in the downtown it, you know you can make your industrial place look just as well you know by keeping some of those things hidden and if there are mechanicals find ways to screen them and there's you know there's the L there's the in the in the landscape section if you adopt that there is a section that talks about you know how to screen some of the mechanicals that was a whirlwind I like it <laughs> that's probably good stuff I like it okay questions or anything okay what do you guys think of that building length topic he actually almost just finished on the 100 feet so one of the examples they used in today's presentation of, of downtown one of the pictures show like an almost flat building and that's a big building and uh, this one here on the top you know it's almost flat building and that's just a lot up. it's broken up right well, a little up. bit but so this this is this in my opinion looks really nice and it's my, my opinion but this looks really nice is all kinds of broke up and really nice looking this does not look good to me that's my opinion again you know but, but so that's what that kind of it's, 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 get, it's getting it to that. that but I think yeah. too that's where it says it's not so well that so you're looking at you're comparing a 2D to a 3D image though you know well. that helps over. yeah right. no, but I, we yeah. got the general idea of what he's saying mm -hmm. yeah that's what I'm like this Sorry. here so what, what these would do, these, these would give the commission the ability to have this discussion, you know, what, like what, what's appropriate and, and what's aesthetically pleasing and, and what's, what's best for the city. And those numbers are good, you know, so, it seems like all right. a fair. Anything else? 
Okay, thank you, sir. Thanks, All righty. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Okay, the next item on the agenda is other business. <coughs> Our next meeting is Monday, May 1st, 6 o'clock. Matt, Carter, have anything? Anybody uh, else have anything? Most to adjourn. Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye, aye. aye. We are aye. adjourned. Thank you. We need to get you a reply.